So if you've reached this video, it's either because you have defeated a new home scenario and you're ready for the next challenge of the axe, or you've just given up on a new home and you thought, let's just skip that one and let's try this one. Regardless of which one you've been, welcome to this video. My name is Rifi and today we're going to be looking at how to beat the axe scenario in Frostpunk. So before we start this video and jump right into it, I want to give you a bit of advice. Everything that you've learned in a new home and everything that you've probably learned from my guides if you've come from there, just forget it because this is a completely different beast completely. Okay, that was sort of a joke, but it is a little bit different in the form of the gameplay. So I will give you the basic rundown. We're going to go in the same sort of direction of sort of five tips, but I'm going to elaborate a little bit more and it's going to be a little bit more of a sort of a loose tips, if you, you know what I mean. So let's talk about the end goal for the axe. How do you win the game? Because it's a little bit different to a new home scenario. Essentially, you are asked to search the frozen wastelands with a scout and find a recipe for you then to send home to your base, which will allow you to build a factory and start working on automatons. Because you'll notice there's a massive sort of push to get steam cars because you only have a few engineers. You don't have any workers, you have 45 engineers and you start off with an automaton. And the goal is to not only keep the arcs or the seeds um, warm so they don't freeze, because if they freeze, you will lose the game, but also having the city to become completely autonomous, where you'll have automatons working in all your major gathering areas, such as coal, steel, food, and wood. And then your engineers will essentially just work in the smaller buildings, like the medical post and the workshop and things like that. So essentially, by the end of the game, you will have automatons working and gathering resources for your 24 hours, and you won't really need to worry about anything else other than keeping your seeds warm and keeping your engineers warm and if you can do that by the end of the game you'll be presented with a choice of saving a new settlement which is a new manchester and you can gather enough resources to send across to them but also you will be given a goal to reach by a certain time and if you have enough resources that the game requires you to reach by the time that it gives you, you will win the game. You don't have to fight yourself through a major freeze. That essentially comes after you've won the game. You don't get to do that. You essentially just need to gather up as many resources as you can, and then you'll win or you'll lose. Now, a new Manchester, that is a completely new twist to the game, and it is a challenge for new players, but it is also a challenge for people that are returning to the game. When I first played this again to get an idea of the axe, I didn't save a new Manchester because I was still remembering how to play through the game. But as always, it comes back like riding a bike, but you have a choice. Now, it is important to remember that the choice that you make um, for saving new Manchester, if you get to a point and you don't have enough time to save them, it won't punish you. It'll just say, oh, well, you didn't save them, but you've saved yourself. And as long as you have the bare minimum uh, that it requires for you to have for your settlement, you will win the game. So spoilers if you are wanting to play this straight away, but at the end of the game, the choice that you're presented with is asking you to save up 8,000 coal, 500 food rations, build five houses, and have all your scouts back from your expeditions. And that's it. If you can get that by the end of the game, yeah, you win. You have a countdown. I think it's 12 days that you've got to do that at the very end. Um, and it, that's it pretty much. The only other goal that you've got to do before that is um, obviously get the recipe out in the out in the wilds and also have an automaton in one of each major resource gathering. So your hot house for your food, your steel works for steel. Um, wood gatherers, you can either have a wall drill or a, a sawmill, and then also the coal mine or coal thumper, whichever you prefer. Uh, but I would probably say go with the coal mine on this one because you can have a lot of steam cars, but that is the only precursor that you need to achieve before then you have to work towards your 8,000 coal, 500 food rations, five houses, and all your expeditions back home. And then also the new Manchester asks for the other resources, so wood, steel, automaton, and there's one of three different waves that you go through like accomplishments you achieve the first one then they ask for something else and then they ask for something else and um, so if you want you can go down that route i am going to post a video on wednesday of me completing it without saving new manchester and then also saving new manchester to give you an idea of which direction i'll take um i might comment on it but otherwise it might just be a complete playthrough so keep an eye on that coming out on wednesday so with that in mind um let's forward plan and let's get to the first tip which I think the most important thing is coal and how to spend it. 
So what you'll notice is that you are asked to save the seeds. You have to keep them warm and you have to keep them from freezing. And once you get to a certain temperature, um, the seeds will essentially show a little circle um, and it will go down. And if it hits zero, you will lose the game. When it gets warmer or once you, once you heat them, it will go back up to full. So the goal is to essentially not let them freeze because if they freeze, you will lose. And that requires coal to do. So how are we going to gather coal? Now, I think the first important thing when I was writing this guide, I was going to follow the linear step of start to finish. Um, obviously, avoiding all the main things like make sure you get all your external resources before you build buildings, make sure that you get a cook house and make sure you get medical posts, you know, all the basic stuff from the scenario guide that I did before. Because you only have a limited workforce and usually five or 10 of them will be out as scouts, um, you're only going to have between 35 or 40 um, engineers to work with. So don't be going down sort of routes for resource gathering that's going to waste a lot of time. So like initially for like your steam sawmills, you're going to have to do, but eventually you can get a wall drill, which will give you more for less workers and by that point you'll have automatons pretty much everywhere so i wouldn't really worry too much about that but definitely don't go down the coal thumper option because that's just a complete waste of time on the left hand side you'll have two coal deposits and i would definitely recommend at least getting to the second stage of the advanced building to give you that more coal and you will have both of them running 24 7 with the automatons and that's where it becomes difficult because the game tells you to make sure that the arcs of the seeds are heated but also you're going to need to gather up 8,000 coal for the end of the game so this is where you want to be putting some tricks in so you don't actually need to heat the buildings straight away you actually don't need to heat them until probably day 10 or 12 because the base level heating is enough to manage up until i believe minus 50 degrees which is then that's when you start getting the circle and that's when it goes down and then it goes back up and it's warmer but even then you still don't need to worry about it because it, it's only a day between it gets colder and warmer so the temperature drop doesn't affect it that much and if it drops below and that's when you start getting the freeze icon. By the time it gets to a higher temperature, that freeze icon won't be zero, if you get what I mean. So you don't actually need to worry about it until probably day 15 when it gets to minus 60 degrees when you need to start putting heaters and steam hubs in. And that will really benefit you massively because that really catches people out at the beginning of the game and they're wasting coal. You only have at the very beginning a really sort of finite amount of coal, as always, but that amount of coal will will do because it's only going to be the generator that's on until probably day six or seven so that'll give you plenty of time to research in and get yourself the coal mine and get yourself prepared for when you start needing to spend that coal but as i say you've got a finite amount of engineers and you need to gather up as much coal as possible so how are you going to do that so you are presented with the option of building a beacon now unlike the first game where you can wait probably five or six days before you need to build a beacon i would probably recommend building it almost straight away and getting searching and it's quite easy in the sense that in the first playthrough of a new home you presented with different directions at the very beginning of the game you were only told to go one way which is down now you can go down to a certain point where then you gather the the recipe to come home and then build the factory but because you're searching for coal and you're especially searching for steam cores i would recommend reaching every single one of those areas down below that you can travel to before you come home it won't impact your gameplay at all because the only other option after that is to go up but you don't hit that checkpoint until you've built the factory and you've built the automaton and you've built certain buildings so you can essentially time gate it to an extent where you can travel everywhere at the bottom come back with a load of resources come back with about seven or eight steam cores and it will really benefit you more than if you just went straight back home from getting the recipe and i guess exploration is essentially the second tip because where you go is sort of heavily dependent on which sort of way you want to go with the gameplay because you are presented with the choice after to then search for more steam cores because the game is time gated so once you've built a second automaton it will say we need more steam cores even if you have sort of five or six in the bank ready it'll ask you to go get more which then you're presented with the choice of going up now on the base level of speed of the scouts you can't reach the furthest point before it freezes so i'll definitely recommend at some point researching to additional scouts and then faster sleds because that's the only way you're going to be able to go up to the furthest point of the map on the second sort of scout mission where you get those extra steam cars it's not a necessity you don't have to reach that further point but if you can get additional scouts and additional speed you will benefit your gameplay more because i think you get about four more steam cars um, you can get by without getting to that point but if you can reach it it's much more beneficial
Let's talk about book of laws. So tip number three would be where you're going to put your laws. And it's quite easy, this section, because there's no faith or order tree that you need to go down. You essentially just go down the basic level of the laws. So there's not much you can go wrong. So there's a basic linear path that you can go down and then you don't really need to put any more into it. Um, so I definitely recommend going to extended and the 24 hour law where they can work. You generally don't need to use a 24 hour one, but you do need the extended workforce. And then after that, go down to um, fighting arena just so you can get the public house and then get moonshine. After you've done moonshine, then get soup because that will mean because you need to get 500 rations. And if you want to save New Manchester, they will ask for more rations later on in the line. You can gather up a heck of a lot of food rations very early on without raising discontent so by day sort of 12 13 you're gonna have those 500 rations already sorted because once you've got your moonshine and your soup you're essentially making four times the amount of food that you would normally you only need one hot house um, you can either have an automaton or workers in that whichever it doesn't really make much of a difference because you will reach that point and um, so you've already reached one of your checkpoints by day sort of 12 13 and then also you can gather more if you want um, to save New Manchester because at one point they do ask for food rations um, but a tip for that is make sure that whatever you give to them doesn't put you below your goal because it's not like once you've hit the checkpoint and if you go underneath it you will still win if you go below the checkpoint of say below 8,000 coal or 8, 500 food rations it will bring it down so if you're going to give stuff to New Manchester you'll need to make sure that you have enough for yourself and then finally, you can choose to maybe go down to sustain life, a care home, and then prosthetics because you might have the odd few that do lose a limb either from the automatons. You do get a few scenarios where they say automatons have stepped on somebody and broken their leg. But because you've able to build that factory by gathering the recipe, um, you can build them almost straight away. So it was probably, it's definitely uh, recommended because you only have a, a small workforce. So you don't want a few of them not being able to work. So definitely go down towards there. And then the only other thing you can look at, you don't need to, but it's just to raise hope and lower discontent if you have is go to like cemetery and then... Um, like funeral services and stuff like that but you don't really need to go down that section the only thing i would really look at is doing soup moonshine extended workforce um house of pleasure if you really are struggling with discontent and hope and then go down to prosthetics and after that the book of laws is pretty much sorted so i'm talking a lot about automatons um so really where you want to place them is completely up to you but the main thing you want to focus on is steel wood and coal because you only need to get 500 food rations you could put workers in there and especially if you go down the soup option um you don't really need a 24 hour sort of service in that uh, hot house so you could put workers in there and you essentially need five uh automatons two for coal mine one or two for steel and then one for a wall drill or a sawmill if you go down the sawmill option you could either take one out the steel works normally have one for steel and then two for wood and that's pretty much it. You do have an option which is a new thing where you can use automaton scouts. Now they will work faster and they will go faster. So if you have a surplus of automatons, you can send them out and they will get to that furthest point, which I was saying you need to research faster sleds. Um, but that is really it. Now, halfway through the game, an engineer will come up to you and say, I have an option to increase the output of automatons. Now you can choose to do that. You will lose an engineer for 24 hours. Then you will lose an automaton for 24 hours. And then you will have to spend a steam car. And then after that, you will have 10% increased efficiency of automatons. And then also they can work in medical posts. Um, I've never had it where they can work in engineer posts. It always seems to go down medical. So you could essentially gain an extra five engineers either to be scouts or to go help them with cutting wood or anything and have an automaton in medical post. Um, the game really pushes you in the direction to have everything completely autonomous. So if you don't want to save New Manchester and give those automatons away, you do have an opportunity to have probably about seven automatons if you can reach all the um, areas in the frozen wastes to do your main bits. And then your engineers can just sit at home and chill other than being in, in the tech workshops, obviously. Uh, but other than that, that's really what you want to focus on. So as I said before, exploration, make sure you get as much steam cars as you possibly can. Use them wisely. Naturally, steam cars will cost when you build um, a wall drill and coal mine and, of course, hot houses. But you're going to need, if you can get to the second um, level of the coal mine, you're going to need four for them, one for a wall drill, one for a hot house. So you've got six 
some quick maths. And then you've probably got about five or six automatons that you can build on top of that. So you've got plenty. Um, and then the workforce is there as a backup. But it is a pretty good game, <laughs> the game mode. It, it does test your skills a little bit. It tests your management. But with a guide like this, hopefully you'll be able to win quite easily. It's a little bit shorter than the other one. Um, but it does require, it's literally more harsh if you do something wrong. I'm conscious this video is getting quite long, so I'll wrap it up with one final tip, which is sort of like one, um, two split into one. So the first one is your sort of insignificant buildings, like your medical posts um, and your cookhouse and stuff. You're only going to need to have one of each. If you're playing a game mode where you need to put more than one medical post, um, you're at a massive disadvantage. So make sure the tents are around the generator. Make sure that you en enhance the generator to a point where it'll keep it warm 24-7. Look at bunk houses. Then obviously the game asks you to build houses. So get yourself to that point as quick as possible. Um, and then one medical post will be good if you do uh, research the advanced medical post where they heal them 20% faster. You will generally only need one. Um, and then obviously because you've gone down the care home route because you went for prosthetics, you will put them in there. Um, if you go down the sustained life option. So you don't really need to be building more than one care house, more than one medical post. And if you do, it's going to make it a lot harder for you end game. And because we're talking about end game, let's finally wrap it up with a final sort of tip. A new Manchester or the new Manchester, they will ask you for certain resources and certain um, automatons that will come at the behest of your engineers. It will raise discontent a little bit, but they will ask you for 600, 600 steel, 600 wood, and then an automaton, and then it will increase, and then they'll ask for food rations, and then they'll ask for more automatons. So I would definitely recommend, if you are wanting to save a new Manchester, make sure you have the bare minimum of your um, resources. If you have more than 8,000, and you can afford to take an automaton off a coal mine to send it over to New Manchester, do so. If you have more than 500 food rations, and giving them food rations won't make you go below yours, uh, do that as well. Like I say, the only thing you need to do at the end for your own survival is five houses, no one out in the frozen wastelands of Scout, 8,000 coal and 500 food rations. If you have all of those covered, you can then start supporting a new Manchester. But bear in mind, by the end of it, they will ask for almost all of your automatons, so be prepared. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you can get past the Ark scenario. The next one on the list for us is the Refugees, um, which will be coming out either the back end of this week or early next week, so keep an eye out on that one. I'm loving the support you're giving me, and I really, really appreciate all the comments and the likes and subscriptions. Um, we're trying to get to that 1,000 subscriptions, um, hopefully in the next couple of months, um, and I hope that the videos can motivate you to, to stick around and, and watch more videos in the future. So thank you, as always. Um, on Wednesday, I'll be hopefully posting the two different options for how to win this game. One without saving New Manchester, which I've got ready, and then one with saving New Manchester. So if you want to see how I play the game from start to finish, you can do so. And thank you always. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Write a comment down below um, if you found this helpful. Give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.